Welcome back to the Meeple Marathon. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how to deploy and activate the Elephant Kazi, specifically in uh, solo or co-op mode in Cloudspire. So the Elephant Kazi is a unit that is part of the air faction, and it gives people a lot of trouble um, in basically understanding what type of a unit it is, when it activates, how to make use of it, when it is deployed, so on and so forth. So I'm going to try and cover uh, everything you need to know about the Elfin Kazi to play it properly when you are playing against it. So this is how the AI essentially controls the Elfin Kazi um, when you are playing against the heirs. If you are playing as the heirs and you are the human player controlling the Elfin Kazi, it's completely different. You get to make a lot of these decisions uh, as to when it takes off and roost roams or uses glide bomb. You get to decide all those things. But when it is uh, the solo AI, it has to follow a specific set of rules. So hopefully this video will um, clear up a lot of the questions people have around the Elephant Kazi. So first of all, how do we how does the elephant kazi deploy well you cannot just deploy it um, you see it has no command value so you cannot just choose to you know same thing on this side you cannot just choose to deploy the elephant kazi like a normal unit for example the hum humminger here or the harrier on its from uh, non-promoted side is is one um i guess i can leave this over here so the way you can bring Elephant Kazi out into the battle, or the way the AI brings Elephant Kazi out into the battle, is that you have units or spires that have this number and then Elfin keyword. So you can see here the Regal Lookout has one Elfin, and so does the Humminger. Um, I'm guessing that there maybe is ones that have like two Elfin Kazi. Um, no, nope, that one's also one. Let's just take a look at here. I don't know of any of them. So maybe they all just say one. But anyways, um, this guy here, yep, same thing. Um, what the one elfin means is that you can place an elephant Kazi on top. And when you're playing against the solo AI, it's always going to be on the glide bomb side. They're always going to be out to attack you uh, as the opposing unit they're never going to use the kind of healing side which is the one with the save keyword so if you have a spire with elfin you can place an elfin kazi at the beginning of every onslaught phase on top of that spire if you have a unit a minion like the humminger here you can place an elfin kazi um, as you deploy it if it comes out of a deployment stack, technically you can put it on there and then you know stack something on top of it like that. Uh, or you know if this is how the um, scenario booklet tells you to stack them up, as soon as the Harrier comes off top, then you can place an Elephant Kazi on top. Also, say you have two Hummingers grouped together like this, if the top Humminger is defeated, as soon as this bottom one is revealed, an Elephant Kazi can be placed on top. So that is um, essentially what you're looking for is the elfin keyword and then whatever numbers at the front is the number that you can, number of elfin kazi that you can place out. So that's how you get or um, will place elfin kazi onto the board um, into the game if you uh, are playing against them in the solo AI. So now, how does the Elephant Kazi function? Well, it actually it just kind of rides along. It either sits on top of a spire or it rides along on, say, the Humminger or like Jalen Nestor here um, can carry an Elephant Kazi like on its shoulders. If you think this is a hummingbird and this is a big barn owl, um, you know, the hummingbird basically just rides around on its shoulders. So wherever the Humminger goes, the Elephant Kazi goes. But the Humminger moves based on his movement stat and the humminger can attack and retaliate on its own so when you are playing the solo ai the elephant kazi literally just rides on top and a lot of times you'll have to peek underneath 
to see what the humminger or whatever unit is carrying him, what those stats are. So let's say, for example, I have moved up here and um, I want to, actually, this is a poor example. Let's say we have the swashbuckler here and I have moved here. Now, the Elephant Kazi's primary target is a hero. It actually does not come off of its perch until it can target a hero, unless that perch is destroyed. So in this instance, we would have come across a, oh no, this isn't a hero, this is um, here. Okay, in this instance, we have come across a minion. The Elephant Kazi does not have a hero it can get to with its roost roam capability. So it just sits there, it's just going along for the ride. So the Humminger will actually attack the hunter for two. And then the hunter, or I mean the buccaneer, would retaliate. So, same thing with the uh, spire here. If the buccaneer here moved into range of the spire, the spire would actually, you know, activate according to its chips. And the elephant kazi is again just hanging out on top. He's just roosting there. Just he's just along for the ride. The only time that an elephant kazi will leave its roost when it does not have a hero that it can reach is when its ride is uh, killed. So say this Humminger is defeated by you know the Buccaneer like so. Now the Buccaneer could target the Elephant Kazi. I'm going to talk about that in a second but say he targets the Humminger. The Humminger is removed from the game while the Elephant Kazi now is stuck. So on its next turn the Elephant Kazi has two options. It can either make it to, um, or no, it has to, hold on. Um, if the unit has multiple hexes, if this unit starts a turn off of a roost because its roost was defeated, it will move adjacent to an opposing hero if possible, if not. Okay, so, um, maybe that, okay. So in this instance, if it has been removed from the Humminger and it's just floating here, then it will, um, let's see, otherwise it does not move from its roost. If this unit has multiple hexes it can move on to, it will move to the hex that is adjacent. If this unit starts a turn off a roost because its roost was defeated, it will move adjacent to an opposing hero if possible. If it cannot, it will move adjacent to the closest opposing minion or spire. So, I thought I had it figured out, but I'm assuming it's gonna move based on this two roost. So again, the Elephant Kazi gives people a lot of trouble, and as you can see, I am still not an expert in the Elephant Kazi. So, um, let's talk about when the Elephant Kazi actually does activate. So, say for example, a hero is within range of the Elephant Kazi. Now, what is a range for the Elephant Kazi? That's this roost number that is on the Humminger or the roost number that's on the Regal Lookout. Generally, the Regal Lookout has a higher one because it's higher up in the air versus the Humminger. So if it's roosting off of the Humminger, it uses its roost roam talent to move, in this case, two, one, two, or it could just go one, and it explodes and does two damage to Captain Tinbeard here. If it's on the Spire, the Spire has three roost capability, so it can go one, two, three, and blow up everything around it. Now, you can use this to your advantage. Say, for example, uh, this there's no one else around. Here is Captain Tinbeard. I can, as a controlling of the AI, have him go one, two, and say, all right, that's it. I don't need to go any further, and I will explode right here, and it will also do two damage to the Humminger. But if there is um, another unit that it can also damage an opposing unit, it will go to the hex where it can do the most damage to opposing units. So in this case, it would go one, two, and then three there, missing the Humminger and dealing two damage to both of these guys. Now, like I said before, it only ever goes after a hero unless it has been removed from its spire or its 
uh, unit that it was riding on. In that case, then it will attack a minion, it will attack a spire, and this is the, the issue I just ran into based on what's in the instruction manual here. How do I know how much movement it has? I'm guessing it has the amount of movement of the roost that it was on before that roost was destroyed. So if it actually was on the spire here, it would get one, two, you know, three movement. And it just, it goes adjacent. It does not go on top of an opposing unit. So um, keep that in mind that, for example, if it was, if this spire was up here, and it could only go, say, two off the elephant roost. It would only go one, two to there to damage the buccaneer. Um, but anyways, it just goes adjacent. It does not go on top of. So a few other things that uh, I wanted to cover is that these two units are completely separate of each other. So, like I have said number, several times here, the Humminger can be defeated out from under the Elephant Kazi, and the Elephant Kazi can be shot off the top of the Humminger. And if it's shot off the top of a Humminger, say by somebody like the Gunner here with a range, then it doesn't blow up, it doesn't do anything, it just is dead, and you get the two source reward for it. Um, also, <clears throat> since the Elephant Kazi only activates roost roam as part of its movement action. This is very important to note. It uses its roost roam talent as part of the movement action, which happens at the beginning of your turn of the, or the AI's turn of the onslaught phase. So in this instance, it would say move up here and it would go one, two, and it could reach with two, it could come up here, but say this gunner was not there, actually it would have to be Tinbeard, but say Tinbeard wasn't there, he was, you know, one further back, one, two, and then for some reason this, you know, ended up here or something during the attack phase, it still does not activate. When this comes in handy, or when, you know, you can use this to your advantage, is when, uh, say for example, Captain Tinbeard was here, and he, he would have to be on this side, and you know, have an opposing unit next to him, but, or no, he doesn't have Swashbuckler. Anyways, let's just say the Humminger here is grouped with another Humminger. We have already taken out the Elephant Kazi off the top, and this Humminger has moved right to there. It cannot attack, and, um, well, no, I guess this would have to be our instance. Um, the Humminger moves, it attacks, Captain Timbeard retaliates and defeats that top Humminger. So a new Humminger comes into play and a new Elephant Kazi comes into play as well. So in this case, the Humminger has already moved. The movement phase of your turn or the AI's turn has already happened. So the Elephant Kazi will not fly off even though it's right next to Captain Tinbeard because the movement phase is already done. So that's one of the just kind of tips to keep in mind that if the movement phase has already happened and you happen to reveal like a new unit that has an elfin keyword and you place an elfin kazi on top, that elfin kazi is not going to roost roam until the next movement phase. So all of this, again, uh, is meant to be used to your advantage, sometimes to your disadvantage, but remember that the solo AI in this uh, game of Cloud Spire is more of a puzzle than anything. Uh, so figuring out how to manipulate the AI and manipulate your minions who, you know, just march ahead willy nilly. That's, that's the fun of this game. So understanding how the Elephant Kazi works is very important when you're playing against the heirs. Hopefully this video has covered some of that stuff. Um, hopefully it just didn't appear as a ramblings. Um, but I've had to go back and forth on a lot of the forums on BGG to figure out all these answers, so I decided to put them all into one nice, neat little video. So hopefully this has been helpful. If it has, please consider giving this a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, um, especially if you'd like to see more like quick tips and tricks videos like this of a specific portion of a game, 
um, please let me know because uh, you know these are something that we could make more of. So I'd love to hear topics that you'd like to hear more about, or if there are again specific units in this game, Cloudspire, that you'd like to hear about, please let me know in the comment section below. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.